Hello, beautiful, wonderful people. It is your girl, Simone Nicole, back at it again with another video. And I know you guys don't even recognize me. Who is she? She is me, I am her. That's all I have to say about that one. But before we talk about what's obviously going on here, let's get into our subscriber shout out of the day. So this video subscriber shout out is going to go to Nerdy Kiera. She commented on my Briogeo video, my review video on Briogeo. And she said, just subscribed. And just to let you know, I love the positive vibes you spread. Thank you for brightening my day. Love yourself. I absolutely appreciate you, Miss Kiera, for leaving such a sweet comment and reminding myself and all of the fellow nice girls here to love themselves. That is such a big thing that I push. Thank you so much, Kiera, for being here and for supporting me. And if you would like to be my subscriber shout out in my next video, then um, first of all, you have to subscribe. Make sure that you are leaving um, positive vibes, positive feelings, any any comments, any emotions underneath the video, and you could be my next subscriber shout out. And with all that being said, let's get into this scalp. Because I'm giving you scalp. I'm sorry, is that a relaxer? I'm sorry, is this Simone relaxes her hair after five years being natural? Cause that, all right. Let's just get into it. Yeah, get into it. So I wanted to reuse old hair that I had in order to reconstruct a new wig and I absolutely love my results. I am gonna hop right into the video pretty soon. I just wanted to give you some deets on this hair. I have a five by five closure and then I have a 24 inch bundle on the bottom and those are both by none other than miss eunice yes yes the closure and the 24 inches i'll show you guys how long this hair is because it is long i'm also short i'm 5'2 but this hair is giving me first of all first of all i'm sorry i'm sorry this up you know let's not let don't let me don't let me even start but this hair is very very long it is past my butt for sure and i didn't trim or cut it or anything like that and then the other part of my hair is alley peerless hair and i've had this hair since my senior year of college i graduated in 2018. let that sink in i've had this hair for three years and it still looks like this. Listen, baby, what you see in my hair, I didn't realize that I bought four, bought and used four bundles of hair. So in total in my hair, I probably have around four and a half bundles of hair in my head. I was not aware that when I originally bought this hair, I bought one 22 inch bundle, two 20, two 20 inch bundles and one 18 inch bundle. I just wanted the hair really, really long this time around. That's why I wanted a single bundle, but not a lot of companies sell single bundles because I immediately went to Ali Pearl to get another longer bundle to go with the rest of the hair and they don't sell single bundles. So I was kind of uh, kind of stuck. What I will say is that uh, Eunice hair, ooh, ooh, I feel like it's a very much so hit and miss kind of company in the YouTube space. They're both AliExpress companies clearly, but definitely the Eunice hair is not 100% human hair. It is 100% a blend. And I know this because when I was straightening the hair, the hair was literally burning inside of my flat iron, like plastic. Uh-uh, skirt, hold up. And also let's just address the fact that it sheds like crazy. I absolutely categorically do not like this hair. I don't know if I don't like all of Uni's hair, but definitely not the hair I got for sure. And let me see how much I paid for these two pieces because I kind of paid a lot. Yeah, just for one, did I pay that much? Oh my God. Just for a five by five closure and one 24 inch bundle, I paid a hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm upset at myself too. I can't believe I paid that much, but I don't know how good of product shots I got 
because uh, I was really, com not confused, but I was nervous the whole time I was constructing this because I haven't constructed a wig of any kind in like over a year, I'm pretty sure. So I didn't know if I still had it in me, but I think I did a pretty good job, I'd say. I feel like I'm giving you very much so scalp. Any person whose technique I talk about in the video, I will have their channels linked down below. I was very much so inspired by Style by Jordan. He produces extremely good content here on YouTube. So I'm gonna make sure to leave his channel down in the description box because um, he helped me out a lot with understanding how to lay this and a bunch of stuff that I will get into. I I know this video is about to be mad long so i'm gonna stop talking and i'm gonna let you guys get into how i turn this hair from this to this let's get into it hey you all it's me simone the pre um of the whole wig is very much so giving me rat's nest i understand um but i'm just showing you guys um, the bundle that I'll be using from Eunice, the 20 inch bundle, and this is the 5x5 five five closure. I think that this is transparent lace, but I'm, I'm dark skinned. We don't believe in transparent lace over here, so we have to take care of that later. Then I have some T-pins. I also have my wig cap, and then I got this handy dandy little wig thing that I see all the little the little Instagram chicks using. So I decided to get one off of Amazon. Link will be in the description box for that. So I did go through and bleach the knots. It took me a couple of rounds of bleaching to get them as transparent as I wanted them to be. I just didn't show that part because there's a million and one tutorials on YouTube for that. So right now you see me cutting off the little, there's like a, on a closure, there's like those little tabs on either side. I cut that off so that the closure could lay as flat as possible. And I actually learned that technique from Slade by Jordan. I will have his YouTube channel linked in the description box down below. So I was really nervous about constructing this wig because I convinced myself that it wouldn't fit. So I went through and measured my head and then I drew um, the measurement of my head onto my wig head so that I would be able to see <laughs> where, like how it lined up. You, 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 get what, you get what I'm saying. I was just trying to make sure that it was a really good fit. So what you're gonna do is take your closure or what I did, this isn't a tutorial. Maybe it is a tutorial. Mm, I think it's a tutorial. So you're gonna take your closure and you are going to pull it up about an inch off of the front of the wig cap. You never want to put your closure too far back because it will look very, very unnatural in that way. And you can see how I have it pushed forward in this clip right here. Um, and I did pin down the closure so it would stay in place. But what I actually decided to do was measure um, my ears from the middle of my head to my ear and then see if I had centered the closure correctly. And I didn't, I had to adjust it slightly. So I just pulled up the T-pins, adjusted it slightly, and then I got a more even fit after that. Next, I am just going to go through and sew this boy down. So I like to tie a knot at the end of my thread and um, as I was literally doing what I'm showing you, I was like, I shouldn't have started there and I shouldn't have started in that direction because the little loop is going to stick out and show against the hairline. So what I decided to do was take my needle and loop it through, like put it inside of the loop so that the loop would at least lay flat. And then I actually have two needles and two threads going at one time because what you want to do is go back and forth between um, the left side and the right side when you're sewing your closure down. And I've made this mistake in the past, um, actually doing someone else's hair, where I will lay the closure down and it will look fine. But when you go through and you sew it down, it, the tension becomes way greater on the closure. So you end up getting like tugging and tension and it will end up not laying flat. So in order to keep the tension even, you want to go back and forth on each side, sewing the closure down. For this closure, I ended up doing four different sections, working my way back and forth until eventually I met in the middle with the other side.
So in order to construct this wig, I decided to use a sewing machine. Um, up until now, I've only used my threaded needle to construct wigs, but I figured, you know, I have a sewing machine, I might as well. So I took a fabric um, color pencil in white and I just drew arbitrary lines, like plotting out my plan. And I left the top, what is that, two to three inches of space because I'm gonna hand sew that down myself. So this is me on the sewing machine and this is definitely something that has a learning curve. So I actually um, double wefted the bottom wefts, the Eunice wefts, um, and I was trying so desperately to sew them on top of each other, but it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I used um, a wide Z stitch in order to get the wefts together and I'll show you in the following clips. Some of them came out really good and then some of them came out too spaced apart so I actually had to go back in and re-sew them together. So if you are going to use a sewing machine method, just know that there will be a learning curve with that. But eventually I did get the technique down. So this is me showing you my good side. <laughs> and then this is my bad side, the side that I had to go through and redo. At first I was pinning the wefts down because again, I was trying to be as like, careful as possible when constructing this but soon I realized that I wouldn't really need the pins so this is me showing you um, how I did so far and I, it was something weird going on, on my camera so I didn't show the rest of me sewing this down but basically my game plan was to instead of taking all of the wefts off at one time I took them off one by one and sewed them on one by one and this is what I was left with so um, I think I did a pretty good job. It is a lot of hair in the back. The hair is super duper thick, but I wanted to leave that space at the top so that I could sew everything down as flat as possible. So I'm gonna fill in this gap with the rest of the hair from that wig. And like I said before, if you're doing what I'm doing and you're repurposing a wig, I would highly encourage you to pull the wefts off as needed and construct the new wig from that instead of pulling all of your wefts off at once because you're gonna lose track of them it's gonna become a mess just work in small sections hello everyone so it is days and days later but this is what she's looking like right now she looks like she has a mullet and she's long and thick so as you can see um this whole area is a mess so i am about to clean my room but i figured that i would um do a silicone mix on her and the silicone mix um, i'll show you guys when i do it it will soften up the hair like a whole heck of a lot and it like needs it and then I just wanted to quickly show you guys I definitely um, was you know almost done constructing this okay so I got scared and I was afraid that it was gonna be too tight once I put it on because of all of the stitching in it so I actually cut it um, and then repositioned the um, closure because the closure had moved back from all of the work I was doing back here. So that's something I would definitely warn you guys about is to make sure that your closure is staying forward. And then I also came a couple inches up with the tracks at the very, very top just in case I need them because it might help to disguise the closure, like the gap between the closure and the hair. I might cut these, who knows, but I put them there as a just in case. And yeah, I forgot to definitely tint this before I put it on, but we're gonna take care of that in a bit. So I'm gonna go through, cut this off, do the silicone mix, let it deep condition, and then we will come back. So next I just went in with the shampoo and conditioner. I just used this Taraji one because it was the first thing I saw. Um, and I went in with the silicone mix. Now the silicone mix, baby. <laughs> Please look at the luster and the shine. I mean, really. Silicone, the silicone mix is really cool for weave, but not for your hair. So I took my heated cap, I heated it up, put the wig into a plastic bag, and then I actually sewed the top with T-pins so they could bake. 
Next, um, I just put some of that Shea Moisture Leave-In and a little bit of that mousse onto the hair and I let it air dry. And this is what we are looking like. I did a little customization on the closure, nothing crazy. And the lighting in this scene isn't too good, but don't worry, it's about to change so that you'll be able to see the wig better. I decided that because I didn't tint my lace at all like an idiot I went in and I did the fake scalp method and I will link the video to the person who I took inspiration from for this and I dyed it to match my skin tone and that is what I ended up with I just doubled it sewed it down and then boom this is what it was looking like I didn't really care for how gritty the top looked um, even after I went in to try to customize it, I didn't really care for that. So I ended up taking it off and using those two colors that you see right there, those two concealers, in order to mix um, Got To Be Glued and some of that concealer in. And again, I will link that video because that really changed the game for me. Once I let that dry, I ended up going in and gluing the wig down, the front of the wig down with Bold Hold because I wanted to have this on for a couple of days. And I do have a wig cap on up under there. I did not do the bald cap method. I just wanted the front to be pretty secure, but I ended up putting a little bit too much glue on. So first I tried to remove it with just water. And then I ended up going in and spraying a little bit of alcohol on there just to try to dissolve the excess glue. So next I went in with my powders and a little brush and I just wanted to customize the lace even further. I ended up actually doing that got to be glued and concealer method all across, like in the part and across the front. The girl in the video recommended that you don't do it to the front, but I just felt like if it worked so well on the part, then I'm gonna do it on the part that most people can see. So that's what I ended up doing and my results were amazing. So here I'm just cutting myself a little bit of baby hair. We don't go crazy, you know, but we is going to give ourselves a little bit of baby hair. You know what I'm saying? Some adult hairs. So I went through, I cut those in and at first I just used the foam in order to give myself an idea or like a roadmap of where I wanted to go with them. And then later on, I'm going to use my favorite edge control, which is the eco styler gel the clear one love that stuff never fails me i'm sorry about my gum too like i'm going off like i am going whap chewing on that gum enjoying myself concentrating on laying these edges and just laying this wig overall i wish i would have spit my gum out please don't kill me but we are we are and first of all i know you see this scalp i know you see this scalp don't play with me so often i feel like um, on YouTube, I can't really find videos where deep, dark skinned girls are going into detail about how they do their lace. So I hope that this is helpful for you guys. I just took the little hair tie scarf that the company Eunice gave me and I just used that to lay my baby hairs down so that they could mold very nicely. I gave my hair a final brush through. I added some mousse because I like the way that mousse looks when I do that thing I just did, like run my fingers through my hair. It just gives you such a, just a beautiful look. And then I took my hot comb and I went through and I flattened the top out even more and I didn't show this part but I definitely did go in with a wax stick as well which I will show you in a moment but right now I am using another Slave by Jordan method to define the part I'm just spraying this root cover up I got it in dark brown I wish I would have got it in black because it would have been much better I don't know what made me get it in dark brown but I wish I did and I got all of this stuff from like my local Walmart's Altas all that stuff and again, I use the wax stick to lay down any flyaways, and these are my results. Alrighties, that is it you guys thank you all so much for watching i appreciate you so much if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and if you would like to see me produce more um content on like 
weave then i would do it i have no problem doing it it's just like when you get into the whole weave category all these companies be wanting to like send you hair and then obligate you to talk about the hair so child i don't know yes that is the end of the video i appreciate you so very much for watching make sure that you go down in the description box down below to purchase any of the things that i have used today and um to look at the creators whose techniques i did use to achieve today's look and with all that being said remember to keep positivity in your life because positivity breeds positivity and we have absolutely no time for negativity in 2020. I will see you guys in my next video.